Yo, what up, what up? For Hypebeast Radio, this is Manny and this is Soundcheck, a show that looks to discover the origin story of your favorite artists and major players in the music industry. We ask the questions that you always wanted to get answered and you never know who may pop by. For episode five, we have Jesse Reyes, a talented singer straight from Toronto. She sits down and talks about her beginnings, true perseverance, and working with Daniel Caesar. Welcome to Soundcheck. Really excited about this one because this is a young artist that I've been a big fan of. So I want to introduce. I want you to let you introduce yourself. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Jesse Reyes. <laughs> um, and so for those, usually, um, what I like to do in the beginning is get the origin story. So, what is Jesse Reyes' origin story? I was born in Toronto to a wonderful Colombian family. Um, Spanish is my first language. I would be nothing without music. Um, since I was a kid, it's what I loved. I used to force my family to sit down and watch me put on these shit shows. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and you know Celia Cruz's? Yeah. Put fruits in my hair and put scars and just do full out shows, mm-hmm. man. And then I fell in love with dance and then school and then depression. And then I've been writing poetry. I've been writing songs, but it didn't really, I didn't really gauge reaction from people until after my first heartbreak which is crazy because mm. i was like i don't know it's hard as a kid you don't really know real pain which is the beauty of childhood because you're kind of untainted mm-hmm. some people are some people go through shit when they're younger but Agreed. my 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 biggest pain came from my first heartbreak and then the songs i don't know man i just started seeing that people it just hit people different mm-hmm. mm, um i wanted to be in music but schooling system isn't really made out to support creatives in a way like other maybe more normal professions. Mm-hmm. I decided to take like a few years off of school to work because I don't want to go to college and be in debt. So I was like, I'm just going to make a little bit of a pile and then I'll pay. And the whole time I was still doing open mics. I was still playing guitar in Kensington Market in Toronto, still handing out mixtapes and have enough money for like CD, but like cases. We'll put that shit in the middle of a paper and wrap it up and put my name and my number and bless it. And I'll just walk around with those and just have them ready to go. And then move to Florida with my family because our green cards finally came in. We've been waiting like 16 years because we were trying to do it the legal way. Yeah. 16 years, finally got it. Moved to Florida, was bartending out there, same thing, busking and everything. But I was frustrated as hell because I felt like I couldn't, like, I couldn't, I couldn't make moves the way I wanted to, you know? Mm hmm. I remember, I remember being on Skype one day because I built, I was building my network in Toronto, mm-hmm. but it was kind of like a do or die, like move to the states. What are you gonna do? Maybe, maybe you'll like sell there. Like who knows? So I moved. I was frustrated as hell because I was waiting for producers to move. I was waiting for like other people to just move at the pace I wanted to move. Mm-hmm. And I got advice one day from this really dope dude named Doc, and he was like, honestly, just whatever you're waiting for, learn how to do it yourself. Mm. Anything you're waiting for. Because when people see you hustling, like you giving it everything, anybody around you is going to be forced to measure up or bounce. So I was like, all right, cool. So then that day I linked a buddy that was was out in Florida too. We went to the beach. We shot a music video. It occurred to me, I'm like, I've heard it a lot. Like sometimes edits take a long time and all that stuff. So I was like, bro, just give me the footage. It took me 48 hours to learn how to edit on um on iMovie because wow. I had my Mac yeah. but I was learning and doing it at the same time I fuck I swear to God I didn't sleep for 48 hours because I was like Man, fuck it I just want to finish it I just want to finish it finished it went on Facebook at the time mm-hmm. went on Twitter everybody that was music affiliated anybody I googled radio stations I googled everything I sent that shit out to, I had like 2,000 people on that I probably sent it out to 1,000 people Wow, a ton some answered, some didn't. Some were like, don't fucking bother me. Some people, like, it was spam. You know, yeah. sometimes it's not the best thing to do. Yeah. One of the people that got it was one of my managers. But at that point, he was working in music videos, and he was like, yeah, man. He's like, I don't really like the video, but I like the music. Yeah. There's this thing called Remix Project in Toronto. That's um, It's like a program for at-risk youth from the age of 16 to 24. So you tell them your situation, what kind of challenges you face. You audition, right? I begged my bar manager for the weekend off. He said it was cool. I bought like a $50 flight on Spirit Airlines. 
went over, did the audition, came back to do some more shifts and make my pile a little bigger because I was like, well, if I'm going to go to school finally for like nine months and I got to live. Mm-hmm. Moved back to Toronto. One of the mentors there was King Louie who came to speak, which is dope, man. That mentorship, I always say, is like one of the biggest things that made a difference for me was to actually talk to people that have been through it, wow. that could tell you about all the no's and all the fuckery they went through and all the downhills and all that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Anyway, so we ended up making a song, and then and then um, Maurizio was just happened to, my, my one manager, the first one, yeah. send a song to his homie, just to ask him for his opinion and ask him for advice and stuff which was Byron, and Byron had no connection to my other manager. Mm-hmm. He sent it to this guy named Jeremiah Thomas, first guy that changed my life too because he's the reason I ended up going to L.A. Started linking with more people, with Dana, with these, like every, the teams just started coming together, man. Wow. It was it was like, I don't even know how to make it a, a long story short because I know clearly I suck. Tell me no, to shut up. Sometimes I ramble. Lo- longer the better, longer man, the better. This is this is amazing. It was nuts, man. It was nuts. If it, if it wasn't for that, like Chance ended up hearing that song, to a chance concert, and ended up linking with Skrillex because of Jeremiah. They wanted to sign me to BMG. I have trust issues, so it took me a year. Like they they waited. He waited. He sent me the stuff, but was working to like build that relationship with me. Ended up going to Sweden before I was even signed for a writing camp that was targeted towards Beyonce and Nicki. Ended up making a camp there that ended up getting me to the Beyonce. So I got my foot in the door as a writer, which is nuts. Cause then, man, it's just it's just a lot. It's a lot, but it's shit that I fucking chased. Like yeah. I I I chased it. And I'm I'm I work hard to become a better singer. I work hard to become a better writer. I work hard to become like a better musician. Yeah. But the one thing that I know I fucking like I know I got I know I got some good work ethic. I know I fu- I know I chase this shit. I'm not going to stop chasing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably the, one of the most important things because I feel like a lot of artists now don't have work ethic. It's just like if it comes, it comes, whatever, whatever. But it's like your story is literally it's insane. It's like just because you that one advice of you do it yourself yeah. led to all this and all the success. Yeah. And now you're performing in Juno Awards. Like it's crazy. And so tell me about that moment because you premiered the song um Figures the reprise with Daniel Caesar, yeah. and I, while I was watching it, and I was like, "This is so cool." How was that moment? I guess it was just all this work, and, and here you are at one of the biggest stages in Toronto, and in and, and music too. Crazy, honored, yeah. surreal. I just, I wasn't expecting anything, man. That was my rookie year there. I legit went in like happy, to, happy to just be there, happy to be invited, happy to be performing. Yeah. It was surreal, man. When they called my name, I didn't believe that shit. That's why my tears came out. That's why, like, you know, I yeah. just didn't expect it. How did that record honor. come together? Uh, figures? Yeah. The the reprise. Um, so Danny Danny had um five sold out shows in Toronto. Mm. He snapped. Shit was <laughs> lit. It was a flex, boy. That was sick. So one of those shows, he asked me to come on as a guest. And usually, like, figures for me, I just play the guitar and it's just me, right? Mm-hmm. But it was his band and his, his all his boys like his whole team was dope. So since the band was there, we were like, all right, cool. Like let me let me just try to thing with like everybody. And so I would only do the guitar for the beginning of the song and then give it off to the band. Mm. That's the first time I'd ever performed figures with a band mm. ever, and it felt so good. And everyone like I'd been from time people were suggesting like maybe a remix, maybe drums on figures, maybe that. And I was always like, no, like I don't want to. I don't want to change the integrity of the song just because I'm chasing a bigger audience. Like for me, it was just sacred to just be what it was, mm-hmm. you know. Just just let it touch whoever it's supposed to touch. It's cool. How I'm happy. I I'm happy. I said no to all that because when it felt right, yeah, it was just like okay, cool. Like this is what I want to do. This is the remix I want to do because it's just the energy around everybody just felt like it felt like it was was what was supposed to happen. Nice. Yeah, he's dope. His whole team is dope. Hella talented. Nice. Yeah, man. How long did it take for the record to get made? Was it just kind of like uh, the reprise? I mean, yeah. How long did that take? You remember? Not not too long. Couple weeks. Yeah, couple weeks. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Talk to me about Toronto's um, R and B scene. That's something I feel like people know about the, of course, rap because of Drake and everybody out there. But R and B, like, it was interesting. What, like, how? What is the scene like that in Toronto? It's dope. There's a lot of really talented artists, man. Savannah Ray, Jive, Daniel Caesar. There's a lot of really talented artists. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Division shit. Daniel Daly was one of my one of my mentors at Remix Project. Nice. He's the he's the lead singer in Division. Yeah. Like when I was trying to I'm trying to sharpen my needle, trying to sharpen my pen, he was giving me tips. Like how important it is to have this certain part of a song like finessed right so it hits somebody harder, like all of that. But it's dope, man. It's but it's not new. Our city's had that. Our city's had that for a long time. The difference now is that like the Drake, the Drake effect is a real thing. Like um, you know what I mean. Like we have a hip hop history that goes back forever. Mm. That goes back a long time. But the difference now is that we have a spotlight on the city, so everyone's like, oh, this and that and this. But that shit's not new. It's just that now we got the mic. What do you? What are some people or that's I guess from that history? Man, chaos, chaos mm. is one of my like chaos is created one of the one of my favorite pieces. I have two two pieces of music that are like for me like top tier, mm -hmm. which is. Frank Ocean's Pink Matter to me is like one of the craziest. I guess you could say three, because also Bohemian Rhapsody is like mad sick. Mm -hmm. Bohemian Rhapsody, Pink Matter, and Chaos is Man I Used to Be outro. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that song? Yeah. The outro, bro. The outro to me, man, is like, oh man, you just can't play that and not like. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the song just grips into my heart and makes me feel instantly mm. and like just liquid i don't know man it's beautiful yeah. but chaos chaos to me has been really influential nice. cardi julie black rascals all of that we were able to include man we did like we did so i don't like canadian hip-hop it was a northern touch 20th year anniversary yeah. for the junos and since everybody was in town we were able to facilitate a reunion at my first the biggest headline show i've had so far which is a thousand people at this spot called commodore mm. And then we were able to get everybody together. So it was like New School Toronto. Like Daniel Caesar came through. Alan Raymond came through. Homeboy from Vancouver, Sun Real came through. And then we were able to like also include like the legends, the history for our city, which was like Chaos and Cardi and Rascals and Julie Black and everybody. Nice. It was, it was, that's one of my favorite memories. Nice. That that's fun. awesome. Yeah. So um, tell me about the future. What is, what is stuff you're working on? What is, what is something you're most excited about? Man, to put out more music. More shows, more crowd surfing. Just keep chasing it, man. I don't want to. I'm trying to stay present because yeah. I like I ask for advice from like any any time I can, I can talk to, like lucky enough to talk to a legend or talk to someone that I really admire. Mm. I walk in trying to be a sponge, and one of the pieces of advice that I keep receiving a lot is, try to stay present because it'll fly. Mm. Just try to stay present. So I'm trying, I'm trying my best to do that, and I stay grateful. But there's a difference, yeah. You know, because you can be super grateful, but there's a difference when you can actually be like, I'm gonna be actively present and like, like, thank you for giving a fuck to even talk to me right now. Mm. You know what? Like, this, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not lost on me that like, there's people that were would beg like cry, to just be here yeah. and have someone care about their music. You know, so yeah. I try to keep that constant and I just want to make sure that I keep that sacred and maintain that till the day I die so that I can like not lose appreciating how magical it is that like six year old me is really happy right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm trying to keep that and just keep chasing, keep keep doing shows, keep connecting with people. Nice. Keep dropping more music. Nice. Yeah, man. What is what does songwriting mean to you? Like writing like penning a record for like for yourself as a songwriter is uh, talking to songwriters they use that sometimes therapeutic sometimes it's um it's their process the way they think sometimes just the process of them writing a song it's, it's unique for each artist i guess how is the songwriting for you what is that process like like talking to you right now just a little different but it's kind of just like i always say like if i broke my finger right now i would sing about breaking my finger tomorrow mm -hmm. The same way I would tell someone about me breaking my finger to like it's just I don't know, it's just it's just like breathing. Mm. You know? Yeah. Mm. That being said, I like I know I have majority of sad or negative or angry songs, but I equate that to being like, Man, if you're sick, if you eat something that's bad for you, you don't think about like, oh, I have to vomit this, like your body just bleh. Yeah. And when you eat something good, you're straight. You don't really think about it. So I think maybe that's why, like, when I'm pissed or angry or hurt, it'll just come out of me easier because it's human to want to get something poison out mm -hmm. as opposed to when I'm happy, I'm good. I can bask in that energy, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's just natural. Nice. 
Mm-hmm. And the, the last portion, we always ask um, if the artist can give some parting words or advice. So if, if someone came up to you, let's say, and asked for your advice, what, would you, what advice would you give them? Man, find one or two people that really fuck with you. Find one or two writers. You don't need a lot. You don't need a massive team. You don't need a lot of money. You don't need that. You just need one or two people that really believe in you because you can start building that way. And work. Like, work. There's people that are... 24 hours a day, think about this shit. 20, like, work. Don't be lazy. And if you are, like, the only pe- the only person you can blame is yourself. Don't blame anybody for shit. Be accountable. Because the second you start doing that is the second you start holding yourself to the same standards that you're expecting other people to. You got to be your own best friend. You got to be your own writer. Fight for it. Chase it. Stay hungry and stay humble. Stay learning. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. Meditate. Yes. Shit. Meditating is great. Oh, my God. It changed my life, man. That's like anger management. It really is. In the morning, it sets the tone, and then, you know? Totally. It gives you a moment to reflect on dreams, too, like, because they'll just start seeping in. And anything that you're, that any any message that got to get to yourself, mm-hmm. that your brain, like, that your subconscious hasn't been able to deliver, sometimes it'll come to you there, and you can get clarity in that. You can be your own best friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So this episode of Soundcheck, you can check out Jesse Reyes music right now on all streaming platforms. You can listen to more episodes of Soundcheck and keep up with everything Hype Beast Radio at hypebeast.com slash radio. Subscribe to Soundcheck on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Overcast, or whatever you listen to podcasts. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at ECMLP and follow Hype Beast Music for more original content and music news. Let us know who you like to have on the show, and thank you for listening to Soundcheck.